In this section, we're going to go ahead and introduce multiplication of whole numbers. And we're going to go ahead and use it um, and refer it back to our addition and subtraction. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just talk about what multiplication is. So an example, it's say that you have 5 times 6. And everyone knows their multiplication tables. And if you don't, you should really go ahead and learn them right now. Um, but everyone knows that 5 times 6 is 30. But why is 5 times 6 30? Well, one of the ways to explain it is that multiplication relates to addition. What 5 times 6 means, well, if you think about it in terms of a picture, it means that you have, let me go ahead and draw this out. One, two, three, Let's go ahead and change this. I'm going to change this to 4 times 6. And everyone knows this is 24. And just because my picture turned out to be 4 by 6 instead of 5 by 6, that doesn't really matter. So what it means is, one way to look at it is, say you have, say this is rows of tables, and then this is, so this would be how many rows you have, this would be how many seats you have per row. So if you have a total of four rows and a total of six seats per row, well, in reality, you actually have 24 seats. You can go ahead and count. And if you count all these little squares together, you're going to get a total of 24 seats, so on and so forth. And what's really happening is, well, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. You have six, row, six seats in the first row. And then you have six seats in the second row, six seats in the third row, and six seats in the fourth row for a total of 24 seats. So what we're getting is that we're getting that multiplication is the same thing as repeated addition. And this is how multiplication relates to addition. So just in case you're not, you, you don't remember the notation, we use this symbol to mean multiplication. Sometimes we use um, a dot, so 4 times 6 would also be equal to 24. We can also go ahead and use parentheses, so 4 times 6. If I use parentheses, I also mean 4 times 6 would be 24. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some examples. Let's say I wanted to write the number, let's say that I have this, 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. Say I have this repeated addition and I want to write this as multiplication. Well, if I can go from multiplication to repeated addition, I can go backwards as well. So one of the things to notice here is that I have five. But how many times do I have five? And I have five a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is the same thing as seven times five, which is thirty-five. So we should be able to go back and forth between repeated addition and multiplication. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and, um, before we go ahead and start multiplying, let's just um, put out there some of the rules of multiplication. So let's start with the multiplication property of zero. Let's call this A. And the multiplication property of zero says that if you take any number, A, times zero, your answer is going to be zero. If you think about it, that makes some sense. If we think back to the chair example, what you're saying is zero rows times six seats, well, that would just be zero rows still. You would not have any seats. And um, so you can plug in a number if you want. For example, five times zero would be zero. Sorry, not five, zero. This brings us to the multiplication property of one. The multiplication property of 1 says, okay, so you have any number a times the number 1. Any number times 1 is going to come out to be itself. So in this case, a times 1 is a. Again, you can put in an example, 5 times 1 would be 5. And if you think back to the example, what happens is here you have one row of 5 seats. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
let's go ahead and cover some other properties. The next one is the commutative property of multiplication. And you may remember the commutative property of addition. In fact, I hope you do. The commutative property of addition told us we can write the order of any two numbers, add them together, and the order doesn't matter. So whether I do A plus B or B plus A, my answer is going to be the same. The same applies to multiplication. If I have A times B or B times A, my answer is going to be exactly the same. So let me go ahead and put some numbers in there. Whether I do 2 times 9, I get 18. Or whether I do 9 times 2, I still get 18. So the order of multiplication doesn't matter. That's why we call that the commutative property of addition. Sorry, of multiplication. By the way, let me talk a little bit about what we call these numbers. In addition, we said that these were called addends. In multiplication, we're going to call these factors. And the answer is going to be the product of those factors. Okay? So what I'm really saying is that the order of the factors doesn't matter. Your product is going to be exactly the same. Let's cover one more property, actually a couple more properties. The next property is the associative property of multiplication. And again, this is going to be exactly like the associative property of addition. The associative property of addition told us we can group the addends however we want, and the answer is not going to change. The same is true of multiplication. If I have 2 times 3 times 4, and I group 2 times 3 together, that's going to give me the same thing if I have 2 times 3 times 4, and if I group 3 and 4 together. Let's check that out. Let's make sure it does. In the first case, 2 times 3 gives me 6 times 4 gives me 24. In the second case, 2 times 3 times 4 is 12, and 2 times 12 is 24. So notice how I got the same thing in both of these cases. Let me just write this in variables so we have it. What I'm saying is that a times b times c is the same whether I group a and b first or b and c first. So the grouping of my factors doesn't change my product. We have one more property, and that property is the distributive property. And this one's going to come back over and over again. We're going to keep reusing this property, so let's go ahead and just drive it home right now. So what it says is if I have a number A multiplied times a sum of two numbers, B and C, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to distribute this A across the sum of b and c. So what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a times the first number plus a times the second number. So let me put some numbers in there to help you out. So say we have 2 times 3 plus 4. One of the things we could do is we could add 3 and 4 first and then multiply the answer which is 7 times 2. But we're not going to do that. We're going to use the distributed property and our answer is going to be exactly the same. When I distribute that 2 I'm going to get 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, my answer is 14. Notice the answer would be the same if I added 3 and 4 first, that would be 7 times 2 would be 14. I'm going to learn a little bit later on exactly what order we should do this in. Now that we know the properties of multiplying numbers, let's go ahead and actually start multiplying some numbers together. So let's say I wanted to multiply 29 times 6. Well, very much in the same way that we multiplied um, whole numbers, or we added whole numbers, let's go ahead and just write it in a vertical fashion. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take that 6 and multiply it times every digit and um, the first factor. So 6 times 9 would be 54. Remember, I can only write one digit at a time, so I have to carry the 5. 6 times 2 would be 12, plus 5 would be 17. Let me do one more example, which I have 648 times 5. Well, I'm just going to take the digit 5, multiply it times everything, every digit in the first factor. 5 times 8 will be 40, carry the 4, 
5 times 4 will be 20, and 4 will be 24, carry the 2. 5 times 6 would be 30, and 2 would be 32. So that's how we do these. In case that we have more than one digit in the second factor, right here we've only had um, one digit, but let's say we have two digits. Let's say we want to multiply 306 times 81. Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to write it in a vertical fashion. And then we're going to just do one digit at a time. So let's start with the digit 1. 1 times 6 would be 6, times 0 would be 0, times 3 would be 3. When I'm going ahead and starting with the 8, I'm going to move one place over to the left. So it's going to be 6 times 8 is 48. Then I'm going to carry the 4. 8 times 0 is going to be 0, and 4 is 4. And 8 times 3 would be... 24. Then I'm going to add the both of my products. So I'm going to get 6 plus 0 would be 0. 0 plus 8 would be 8. 3 plus 4 would be 7. 4, 2. 24,786. I'm sorry, 6 plus 0 would be 6, not 0. And you can do that over and over again. And if you need some extra help, you can go ahead and please don't be ashamed to ask during class to ask during class.